Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Olga is here. For those of you who haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell as well to get the latest notifications about the videos I post out there for you guys. And let's go ahead and jump right into the video. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Vizard Golden Hour palette and this is what she looks like. So this is Visart Golden Hour palette, or you can pronounce it Viseart. So this just recently became available on Sephora's website. And I, as soon as I saw that, decided to purchase because it seemed like a very good color choice for my particular needs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what she looks like inside. So this is what the palette looks like inside. It has nine shades. You can see right here. They do have this clear plastic going on on the top. I am going to move it out of the way so you can see the shades better. And the plastic there has the names underneath each shadow so that you know which shadow you are applying. I personally find it a little bit annoying, this type of plastic, not to mention that it's kind of on the side, so it's not on the top like usual, like when you see something like Natasha Denona's palettes where it's kind of on the top, but this is sort of on the side, so I am going to probably try to take it off. I didn't want to do it yet because I don't want to not be able to show you how the palette actually looks like inside. So when you look at them with this clear plastic covering, when you are looking at the colors with the clear plastic covering the um, actual shadows, you can see the names underneath. The names are of, of uh, French origin and some of them for me are hard to pronounce, others are easy. So on the top row here we have the Honorary, Rivoli, Maintain, and then the second row is uh, Seine, Palace, and Louvre, and then the third row is Carousel, Royal, and Tuileries. So these are the names of these shadows. There are nine shadows in this palette. The palette's name is Golden Hour. It contains 14 grams of net weight, which is 0.49 ounces of the product. It also is made in USA, distributed by France. This product on the back tells you that the product itself is good for 36 months. It bears the mark of the E mark, which tells you that the amount of stuff in these palettes is equal. This is something that they put on the products when they are sold in the European Union. So this essential eyeshadows, highly pigmented, smooth, homogeneous texture, easy blend, no fallout, and long stay. So this is something I read on the Sephora's website and it also bears that information here on the back of the palette. So the palette is on the Sephora's website, it says they do not test on animals, so it is cruelty-free. However, it does not have the bunny ears or the bunny symbol that we all see on some of the palettes. So the packaging is actually quite adorable. It's a very simple packaging, but the beauty of these packages with the Vizia Art palettes is that this particular brand they manufacture everything from start to finish, so they don't outsource to some other third-party company who makes the palettes for them. They oversee the process of this from start to finish, which is big. I mean, this is a lot of effort that goes into creating this. I have done some research and I watched another a YouTuber who had done a very, very thorough review of the uh, Vizia Art. Here is what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. For the uh, brow, I went ahead and applied the Honorary color for the brow bone and then Montaigne and I put that kind of in the crease as a transition shade. 
and then louver and I started applying it and building it in the corners right here and kind of dragging it into the middle and then I had gone in into the palace and I put that I tucked it in into this lower lash line I also had gone in into the Tuileries which is their black color and I had redefined to give it a deeper effect of the crease again or sane and I had put that on top of the palace the palace that I used here on the lower lash line I also had put the palace into the center of my eyelid and then I also had gone in with sienna to give it even a brighter more bright effect I did set that with the Urban Decay setting spray nighter into the corners right here I tucked in Rivoli so that's what I'm wearing on my eyes besides that there is the Stila eyeliner roller lash by Benefit Cosmetics on my eyelashes there are no falsies today I just wanted to make sure I when I am testing out some palette colors I try not to wear false eyelashes with that first time I wear something because I want to be able to test how they perform is there going to be any fallout so the brand is claiming that there is no fallout so I would say for right now this is going to be two-part video this one I will do the swatches right now I'll show you how it swatches how it performs throughout the day so because we are at the end of the day today I'm not going to be able to test this look for the whole eight hour but I am going to go ahead and film that some other day and probably next weekend because we are going into the week so it's a little crazy with my job so I will be probably I will be revisiting this next week and tell you how it performs throughout the whole day Overall, right now, the first impressions are extremely favorable. First of all, I really like Visia Art brand. This is a solid brand with solid people behind the brand. I like what they stand for and what they represent with their products. I have the, their um, 04 or 04 palette in mattes. I absolutely love the payout of those colors. They are extremely blended, very nicely pigmented. They owners of the brand explained that when they press the colors they have to create individual presses for individual colors because when you're pressing shimmers or when you're pressing mattes you cannot apply the same strength 
of the press because you're going to destroy the pigment. So they had done a lot of research and a lot of work had gone into, you know, really discovering and testing out different pressures that you can apply to press an eyeshadow because you do not want to lose the pigment and you also don't want it to make it too hard so all of these are variables that go into this process the palette itself this particular palette on sephora's website retails for 49 dollars and i think for visia art it's extremely i would say this is this is a nice deal you're getting because before they started having their smaller palettes, you were only kind of limited to buying the big palette, like the one that I have right now, the O4 mattes, and that palette would, it cost you $80. So if you are not familiar with the brand, I could understand where there would be a lot of hesitation coming in when it comes to saying, okay, do I want to blow $80 on some brand I have never heard of before? And many people wouldn't, and many people probably wouldn't understand who they are to charge this much. But if you do your research and on the brand and on the founders of the brand, you will come to understand how much work goes into these palettes. So you would appreciate, you know, I'm not saying that, oh, it's cheap, you know, no but you would appreciate and understand why something costs as much as it does and why these people have the right to be asking for that much for the palette. You are getting extremely great solid quality with the palette and you are getting, you know, that's what you're getting. You're getting great pigments, you're getting great, great payoff of payout of colors. And right now I worked with these colors are like butter. They are a beauty to work with. They are extremely easy to blend. You don't have to go in back and forth, back and forth into the palette, into the brush. But my advice to anybody who wants to go ahead and splurge by this palette is get yourself nice quality brushes. If you are concerned about, you know, things like, oh, you don't want to use the real fibers, like real animal hair brushes, then get yourself a really decent set uh, of synthetic brushes because you will be bitterly disappointed when you try to work with something this luxurious and if you go in with crappy brushes, it might not give you a really great result and then you will be disappointed with the palette. But before you make up that mind, go ahead and get yourself a nice set of brushes. I use Wayne Goss's brushes. I understand that they're pricey, but these brushes do not give me any headache and they work beautifully with all of these expensive palettes. Now, the swatches that I did, I did do with an e.l.f. brush and I have to be honest with you, the uh, brush swatches did not perform as well, but I wanted to do it with a cheaper brush because I wanted to show you precisely what's going to happen. I might go ahead and re-swatch these colors with a Wayne Goss brush just to see what happens then. You know, I might, I might not, I will see for my next video, but we'll definitely film a video of with the wear and how this wears throughout the day. That would be all for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please leave me your questions and comments in the section down below, and I will see you all in my next video. I love you. Bye. Yes, come on. Some of us are trying to make videos. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Much better. Much better.